November 5, 2003, all doubt of Ridgway's guilt was erased. He pleaded guilty to the murders of 48 women. He'd made a deal to cooperate with the prosecution to provide more information on his victims and the whereabouts of their remains. In doing so, he avoided a trial and possible death penalty. Mr. Ridgway, how do you plead to the charge of aggravated murder in the first degree as charged in count one for the death of Wendy Lee Caulfield? Guilty. How do you plead to the charge of aggravated murder in the first degree as charged in count two? Guilty. 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 It's like he didn't have any remorse at all for what he had done. You know, he killed so many people, he didn't remember who they were, what they looked like. I just couldn't believe that somebody could kill all those people and not remember them. Neither could the angry relatives of his victims, who were invited to speak in court when Ridgway was sentenced to life without parole on December 18, 2003. You had said your memory, when it comes to all of the women you took, was gone. Our memory is not. In your words, you said that they didn't mean anything to you, but she meant everything to us. She was a mother, she was a wife, she was a sister, and we miss her. Gary Ridgway sat there stone-faced as victims' relatives damned him and mocked him. He's an animal. I wish for him to have a long, suffering, cruel death. He's gonna go to hell and that's where he belongs. But then the emotionless facade finally cracked when the father of one of his victims morning, appeared to surprise him with a dose of human kindness. Mr. Ridgway, um, there are people here that hate you. I'm not one of them. You've, you've made it difficult to live up to what I believe, and that is what God says to do, and that's to forgive. You are forgiven, sir. Those tears and a statement he made to the court later that day were as close to showing real remorse as Gary Ridgway had ever come.